Hello my friends, this is Ronnie and uh, we've got a Running Raw t-shirt on today. Today we're going to talk about how fruit or fruit eating in mankind has been basically written out of human history because we have a skewed view of history because of cooked food addiction and because of animal food addiction and all the rest of it. So I was actually chatting to Tim Van Orden who uh, made this t-shirt. Got this at the Woodstock Fruit Festival years ago. Apparently he's going to be there this year. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. A little secret. Um, really looking forward to seeing Tim. Basically one of the reasons that I, basically the reason I started to really get into the raw lifestyle was because of Tim and a video, a few videos he made. But anyway, uh, looking back on human history, like I was over at my brother's house today and he had a book called Sapiens and Sapiens is a really successful book. I think it's, I don't know how many copies it's sold, but it's been a really popular book, big, massive, thick book about the history of mankind. Looks really well put together. I was looking at the information. I was excited about the book. I thought this is great. I like the idea of, you know, getting human history together in one place, understanding it, you know, broadly. And it's going through, you know, 16 billion years ago, the Big Bang, 13.5 billion years ago, the Earth is formed. And, you know, it's going through this whole stuff. And I started to read the first chapter and or the first part of it and because I'm interested in what it's going to say about how people ate and human food and how we evolved and all of that stuff. And once again, it shows me that history has been skewed. Human history has been skewed by this weird, um, complete writing out of history of our evolution on a fruit diet. And I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. <laughs> uh, on this channel, we talk about raw foods and fruit-based raw food diet, fruitarian style diet. Um, I've been doing that around about the last eight years, on and off, little, little experiments with other things. Sometimes a much higher fat diet and things like that, but a uh, fruit-based diet is what I, I like to promote for health. And fruit in general is part of our environment and fruit trees. And fruit is just like almost wiped out of history. It's so weird. It's like wiped. If I look outside, I don't see any fruit trees. Well, actually, there probably are some fruit trees out there. But... Not what, not like edible fruit trees. There, are, there's fruits that we can't really eat. There might be a few out there, but it should be like all over the place. We are fruit eaters. It makes no sense. Why don't? Why doesn't every single square inch of space we have covered in fruit trees and bushes with fruit on it? It just, it really makes no sense. Uh, <laughs> but it kind of does make sense when you look at the world through the lens of cooked food addiction, animal food addiction and all this stuff. There's some birds flying by outside. I'm really captivated by them for a second there. But, um, so it's going through human evolution and it's talking about that we had descended from, you know, six million years ago, human beings, what it says in this book, six million years ago, there's a female ape of some kind that has one daughter and um, that has two daughters. One of those daughters is the originator of humans. The other is the originator of chimpanzees. And uh, humans, apart from chimpanzees, humans, actually there was a whole number of different humans. So we come from the genus Homo. We're all homos, right? <laughs> We're all homos. And uh, we come from the genus Homo. It goes, so there's like Homo neanderthalus, neanderthals, Homo floriensis, which was another one, Homo something else. And I think, um, not sure where Australopithecus was, but, you know, these guys are in there somewhere. Homo erectus, the other famous one. Uh, he was a Homo and he was erect as well. So... 
he was an interesting character, but they were around for a long time, Homo erectus, like two million years. Uh, modern humans, only about 100,000 years. Well, modern humans. So we've not been around that long in our current kind of state. Uh, and, but that's, you know, interesting. Six million years ago, we split from the chim we, was, we split from the ancestor of the chimpanzee. We weren't. We were never a chimpanzee. We split from the ancestor before chimpanzees came about and we came about. Um, and then it goes on to talk about how human beings, if you look at different to like a chimpanzee and other things, that we have lost muscle mass, so we are not as strong. As the chimpanzee and other apes, we're certainly not as strong as the the uh, gorilla and other things, but and and we're not as strong as many animals out there, but that's because we have a brain that takes up so much energy that we had to sacrifice something. So we sacrificed our uh, 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 a heavier or a bigger musculature. Uh, this is the theory, I guess. We we sacrificed that in order to have more energy that we could put towards the brain. So we developed bigger brains and they're kind of saying that we don't really understand why we developed bigger brains and what was the benefit because this is where I think it got a bit weird. It's like, because he was saying, well, what's the benefit of a bigger brain when uh, it's, not, it's not really clear what the benefit is if we're having to fight against a chimpanzee and it can pull and it can tear us apart? Yes. And this is what I really don't understand, how they don't understand this point. Yes, human beings, in an individual one-on-one -on -one match, a chimpanzee will beat a human being. All day long. In a tribe of humans against tribe of chimpanzees fight to the death, who's going to control this area? We would destroy chimpanzees. We would destroy gorillas. That's what we already do. Like We do that with every animal. We destroy them. We've destroyed other humans, you know. We've created the most sophisticated weapons and defense systems, obviously, that we've ever seen um, in order to protect our territories and stuff like that. But even without any weapons, and I don't know why I'm getting, I'm getting kind of into this, but let's have a little bit of pride about humanity. <laughs> Here, if we want to call, maybe this isn't the right kind of thing, but you can people talk about chimpanzees, other animals, wolves being strong, whatever, bears and all that. They do not stand a chance against us. Not a chance. We are we are the motherfuckers of the planet, man. <laughs> you know, it's funny when people say like human beings, they're weak. We're weak. We can't. Yeah, you can't on a one-on-one -on -one match. You're not going to beat an, a lion. But we have lions doing tricks in circuses for us. We have lions in zoos. You know, we control these other animals. So when people go on about why would we develop a bigger brain, it's not really clear. Um, whatever. It's not really clear. Because it's a massive advantage. Right, so this is a, this is getting off topic, right? But I just, I think that's a, another thing I wanted to say. Like, a tribe of chimpanzees against a tribe of humans, no, no chance, no chance. No, doesn't don't even need any weapons or anything. Um, we're just too smart. We're just outsmart them. They run away from us, like in the wild, chimpanzees and things like that run away from us. So, eh. Uh, I don't, I don't even know what, that's wasting time in this video going over that. But anyway, uh, human beings, very smart, right? We, we, we can defeat any animal as a group, individually not. So it makes sense. It totally makes sense to have a bigger brain. But what a bigger brain also allows is we actually know where the food is, right? So we know where it is and how to find it and where to get it. We're not carnivores. I know a lot of you love this idea, but unfortunately you do not have the sense of smell of a carnivore. You have the sense of smell of a plant-eating animal that finds rotting flesh revolting. But we, and we can't even track animals, right? We just don't have the sense of smell to find them. But we do have the eyesight and the memory systems to find fruit 
and be able to remember where it was next year. I'm just blowing some of your minds right now. I'm, I'm making you understand how, th why, how this thing developed. This thing inside your cranium. That you never forget a place. You never forget how to get to the restaurant or, or the shop or whatever. You don't, you don't have to smell where it is. You never forget. That's amazing intelligence. That's amazing power of memory. I go to New York now and again, you know, once, once a year, the last seven or eight years. And I can find my way around there different places. I've been to uh, other parts of the UK, Edinburgh, whatever. I can find my way around. These are just stored in the memory structures of my brain. You know, I can find different, every, almost every place in the world. I've got maps in my head. This is, hum this is your intelligence as a human being. And it puts you way ahead of other animals, right? Especially if it comes to trying to find some fruit. And uh, this video's got really off topic, right? But basically I'm trying to get back to this, the way that history has skewed the whole thing. Because he's talking about, like, firstly he's saying he doesn't really understand why we got smarter and all that. We had to get rid of muscle mass, it made us weaker. Um, our babies are less developed because the head has to be bigger to encompass a bigger brain. So the baby has to come out like really immature. The woman's, uh, we had to, we're standing upright and the woman's hips had to, you know, change and stuff in the head and all that. So it's like, oh, this doesn't make any sense. Okay, well, fair enough. But the question is really why have human beings got so smart and, and they're, not, they're not really sure. And, and he goes on to talk about uh, that one of our niches ecologically might have been that we would come after a, after the carnivores come and eaten the animal, then the scavengers have come along and eaten the rest of the animal, and then we would have come along and got the bones and broken the bones and eaten the stuff inside the bones. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever done that in your life. If you've ever found that appealing, apparently that's what human beings evolved on. Come on. This is ridiculous that people think things like that. Not that we might not have done it if we were starving, but it's ridiculous. And the other thing is that we were... We, I don't know. I don't, I don't get this idea that we were weak. We're not weak. We, we, we went around in massive posses. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're human beings. We, we have groups of, like, thousands. That's why we defeat everything, because we get together in the hundreds. What are, what are lions going to do against 150 human beings in an army? Nothing. So, <laughs> that's what we're all about, right? But anyway, um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it's just, it's, it's just weird to me, this skewed idea. And then uh, fire goes back. I think fire goes back quite a long time that we would have used fire and he's kind of saying yeah we had fire so we could kind of protect ourselves from animals and burn down forests and then we would go through forests and eat all the burned animals and stuff like uh, I, I, I don't know like we, if you burn your own forest like you might burn yourself like why would you burn your forest you've just burned all your fruit trees like why would, why would we do that um so it's just it's just funny and weird, right? But the whole thing about this, he's talking about the bones getting broken to eat the marrow. He's talking about, you know, burning the whole forest and then eating stuff out of the remains of like burned things out of the remains of the forest, as if we did as if that's like how humans evolved. And not once mentions fruit. Not once. It it only comes up in a line where it's like nuts. Plants, leaves, insects, blah blah blah, fruit, blah blah blah. Like it's and, and I think it was only mentioned in the in the case of cooking allowed us to eat things eat more easily, like fruit or something like that. <laughs> it's just madness. I just don't I don't get this at all. Like even someone who is the most ardent fruit person, uh cooked food lover or whatever. How can you not accept that it's quite obvious that human beings 
a frugivores. Like, why isn't that the first page in the whole thing? Why isn't it, you know, they talk about the bigger brains and the reduced length of the intestines and the, they talk about stuff like that, like, well, that means that's to do with cooked food. It's not, it's not to do with cooked food. It's very similar to our frugivore primates. It's very similar to the bonobo. Um, the fact that we're frugivores is something that's, I don't, it's not really like, accepted in a big way but there's plenty of evidence to suggest that and it's just, it's just weird it's just really weird that they wouldn't say fruit that it wouldn't just come out and say that so why is fruit being so left behind neglected especially as a theory i mean i can't imagine that the better theory here is not that we would scavenge for scavenge for bones like we would just follow around carnivores oh oh there's a lion there oh let's follow the lion we're little weak human beings we don't know what we're doing let's oh they're, they're cutting the thing like that's not what human beings are <laughs> like we're not we're not this vulnerable creature and you know getting um killed by everything we're not that vulnerable uh but it is a bit of a mystery. Like, th there's no consensus on why human beings grew such a big brain. But it's why, why wouldn't it be the same thing that every other primate? That they, that they were fruit eaters. That they had this um, access to fruits. That we were actually, we're, we're the one animal able to eat them. Because they, those fruits are protected for us. You know, that you have to open them up. They have skin on them with toxic, toxic um, compounds that stop other animals from eating them. They have spikes on the outside like durians and things like that. They have a uh, hairiness on the outside that might be unattractive to other animals or whatever. So it's, it's madness to me. It's all madness, right? But history does seem to, does seem to have been skewed. So that whole book, I'm like, I don't know if I can read this book now. I don't know if I can trust anything that's said because it's all through the eyes of cooked food history, right? It's not saying that figs were the old were like the oldest known crop. The oldest known farmed crop is a fruit, is figs. You know? It's not talking about that. I mean it's this is what's so weird as well. It's only like in the last hundred years that fruit hasn't been a major part of the diet. It's only been in like the last hundred years when people have replaced it for sugar and sugary snacks and things. Maybe 200 years. But it used to be every town had orchards. There was fruit growing all over the place. People would go out and pick fruit. Like, it's only recently. Because if you imagine the world without sugar and sugary snacks, of course we're going to be growing fruit, picking fruit, eating fruit all the time. Of course we are. Of course people were growing these, you know, figs and everything else. So, the, I don't know, the, the world is skewed. And you just want, it's, it's a struggle to actually find anything honest about this. That says, that puts forward the theory. And in the same with this book, there was a book called Cooked Food Makes Us Human or something. I can't remember. The, it wasn't, that's not the name of it. <laughs> but it was, it was Richard Wrangham. Catch a fire or something like that. And it, it, it talked about that. Cooked food made us human. And there's a lot of people that say that. But what's weird to me is that their evidence for that is like, you know, our jaw is smaller and our intestines are less or whatever. It's like, yeah, but that's just in line with other frugivores. It's not any different. So they the first part is why did our brains go so big well what about all the other primates with big brains they ate fruit and uh, and fruit is a food that in order you need to be intelligent to live on fruit that's the thing you need to be you need you got to be intelligent if you want to live on fruit you know you've just got to be you've got to know what it is you've got to be able to remember where it all is you've got to be able to you know see where it is, you need visual, you know, very high level of visual 
function. You need to be able to feel, touch, smell it, pick it, um, and then you know remember that for next year. We've completely, completely lost touch with our natural and amazing instinct all around fruit. We're completely confused on earth. Like, where do we fit in? We need to go out and hunt and maybe have some dogs with us and a gun and something else. And that's like our natural manly instinct coming out. No, it's not. That's nothing to do with your instinct. Your instinct is working all the time. It's just in a weird world. Um, but you put us back into our natural eco-niche environment and we would start to redevelop and open up these amazing areas of intelligence in the brain that would allow us to be able to live in those environments. But if we try and hunt, it's like dumb. Hunting is dumbness. It's a stupid way of trying to trying to get your food. Paying for licenses so you can go into some place and shoot animals. It's um it's ridiculous, you know, it's it's silly. And then you keep it in your freezer. What what was that all about? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, like, um, but you've got to accept that people are irrational, like I was reading this thing recently, people are irrational, uh, illogical, uh, all this kind of stuff, but you have to love them anyway, and, and that's like a, the paradoxical commandment, and that's the truth, we can't try and force this, you, if this is the first time you've heard any of this stuff, you might not understand it. You might not get this lifestyle or the diet. And it might take 10 years and then you'll kind of start to understand it. We're not rational or, or logical. We've been brainwashed into weird different ideas of our own personal culture. And some of that's good and some of it is helpful to you, but it tends to be in scientific and historical information, we go back to the real rational stuff. So that we've got, you know, the rational side of it. And what have we got? Human beings evolved through breaking bones and eating the marrow out. What? Come on now. Come on now. So anyway, if you like this kind of stuff and you want to learn more about a fruit-based diet, you can follow this channel. I'll probably keep on doing videos. I quite, I quite like it. <laughs> I get a little bit of reaction sometimes. Most of you try and tell me what to do. Fair enough. And, uh, and you can subscribe down there. And if you want to come to the Fruit Festival, registration closes on Saturday. So we'll go to Fruit Fest. I don't even know. Yeah, you'll have to register for the webinar or something. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll join the email list, fruitfest.co.uk. And we'll, we'll send you out an email to let you know when registration's closing or whatever. So thank you very much for watching these videos. And we'll see you in another one. Leave your comments below.